I'd like to call to order the West Covina Planning Commission for Tuesday, April 23rd at 7.02 p.m. Would you all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Commissioner Castellanos. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would you please remain standing for a second for a moment of silence for those victims in the Boston bombing? Thank you. We have a roll call, please. Commissioner Valles? Here. Commissioner Menefee? Here. Commissioner Castellanos? Here. Commissioner Holtz? Here. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner, Commissioner Blackburn. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, do we have any uh, changes uh, or additions to the uh, regular meeting uh, minutes of April 9th, 2013? I'd move approval as presented. Okay, motion by Commissioner Menefee. Actually, let me... Um, that's the consent calendar that you're referring to. We have two items on there, so let me cover those, and you can you can make a motion and approve both in one vote. The consent and the minutes. The the forthcoming. I'm sorry, I'm out of order. Go ahead, Thank you. go forward. <laughs> motion okay, second. so motion to approve by uh, Commissioner Menefee and second. Second. Second by Commissioner Valles. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, this brings us to oral communications. This is a time when any member of the public may speak to the commission on any matter within the scope of duties assigned to the commission. Other matters included on this agenda may be addressed when that item is under consideration. For all oral communication, the chairperson may impose reasonable limitations on public comments to assure an orderly and timely meeting. The Ralph M. Brown Act limits the Planning Commission and staff's ability to respond to public comments at this meeting. Thus, your comments may be agendized for a future meeting or referred to staff. The Commission may ask questions for clarification if desired at this time. By policy of the Commission, <clears throat> excuse me, oral communications at this time in the agenda is limited to a total of 15 minutes. Persons who are not afforded the opportunity to speak at this time may do so under item E later on the agenda. I have two speaker cards at this time. First one is uh, Geneva Wood. Would you please come up to the podium? Is it on? Pull, pull the microphone a little bit towards you. Okay. There you go. I think she's wanting to speak on the public hearing item, Chairman Holmes. I want to wait till the public, okay. Okay, would you, we're going to have that on the agenda and it'll give you time to speak at that time. Okay. And the next person is Paul Lozano and it's the same thing. Yes. If you want to wait till it's on the agenda and we can speak at that time. Does anybody else wish to speak at this time? Come on up. Same issue? Okay. Uh, we'll ask you to fill out a card, anybody who wants to speak, so we have your name. Okay, so another other comments? Come on up. Okay. It's for the same issue? Okay. Nobody else wants to speak on any other issue at this time? Okay. Okay, the consent calendar. Did you want to say something on that, Jeff? Yeah, I was eager to speak on that. <laughs> uh, in the consent calendar, we have two items. We have the forthcoming, which tells you uh, of the items that are upcoming on the next meeting. We do have some items for the May 14th meeting. We will not be having a May 28th meeting. They're going to be doing some construction here in the uh, chambers, so that won't meet. we will not be having a meeting that night. 
Um, also on the, four, uh, the consent, we have a extension of time request for conditional use permit number 1015. That is a conditional use permit on a single family house to uh, add to that house. It was approved in March of 2011 and it was extended last year in 2012 and there's a, another ex extension request that's being requested this year for an extension to next year 2014. Okay. Any comments from the commission on those items? None? Okay. Okay. So we'll just receive and file then? Uh, you need to make a motion for the extension okay. for the good state counter. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion from uh, second. Second for many fee. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Okay, that makes us to item number three. This is the extension of time conditional use permit number 10-15. The applicant is Miguel Garcia. Chairman Holtz, we just covered that under the... Uh, oh, you covered that one? Yeah. Okay. Sorry about four. that. Okay, we're on item four. This is uh, administrative use permit number 13-04, categorical, ex <laughs> categorical exemption, class one existing facilities. The applicant is Scott Manchin, Martial Arts Schools and Zumba Dance Studios. Location 350 South Glendora Avenue. Can we hear a staff report, please? Yes, our planning intern, Sophia Tatlian, will be presenting that report. Good evening, Chairman and Commissioners. I present to you today Administrative Use Permit 1304 related to the use of a martial arts school and Zumba studio within a service commercial zone. The applicant, Scott Manchan, is proposing to operate a martial arts school and Zumba, Zumba dance studio at 350 South Glendora Avenue. Martial arts instruction will be available to youths 5 through 18 years of age and adults, as well as Zumba dance studio for adults. The proposed hours of operation is the following, 8.30 to 10.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. on Saturdays. The business will not be open on Sundays. The martial arts and Zumba classes will be held exclusively of one another. The existing tenant space is 1,653 square feet in area and is designated seven parking spaces based on retail parking requirements. The applicant indicated the martial arts school and Zumba dance studio will consist of a maximum of one to two employees and 20 youth students or 12 adult students to be present on the site at any one time. The planning department received emails indicating concerns during the noticing period from addresses within the Glendora shops and residential areas within West Covina. These communications expressed several concerns such as the following. The martial arts school will reduce the amount of parking spaces available for retail customers. There is another martial arts studio operating within the Glendora shops area. Staff recommends the Planning Commission adopt a resolution approving Administrative Use Permit Number 1304. This concludes staff's presentation. I would be happy to answer any questions the Commission may have. Also, the applicant is present and available to answer any additional questions per pertaining to the proposal. Any questions of staff? No. None? Okay. I, I have one. Uh, isn't this an existing location by the same individual? No, I don't. Do we know what the previous use was? Well, because uh, when I went there today, it's the same name on the door. Yeah, it's they, painted they, there, and the same name of the business, and it's, it has the same. They've already sort of set up shop there, uh -huh. so they're not moving in. They've already sort of moved in, but this is the okay, approval so, to allow them to. Because it looked like they were already in business. That's what I was wondering. So this is a brand new applicant. <coughs> Correct. Thank you. Okay. No questions of staff? Okay. Okay, well, this opens up the public testimony. Anybody wish to speak on behalf of the applicant? Or does the applicant wish to speak? <coughs> uh, good evening. My name is Scott Manchin. 
for Mansion Martial Arts. I'm here tonight to ask your approval for the granting of the application permit. Uh, my business will not impact the parking because we are closed during the peak hours. We operate a few hours in the morning and primarily in the evening when my neighbors close down. Okay. Are you going to allow people to come in the back entrance and park yes. in the back also? Yes, staff is instructed to park in the back and also if you know, when we get students. Thank you. Any questions of the applicant? I just have one question. Yes. Um, so you didn't have a permit for the business prior to setting up shop? No, it was uh, what ended up happening when I, I contacted the city to obtain a business license over the phone, went through the whole process, came down, happy to do it, and then found out I needed the permit. And that was after I signed the lease, started moving in. So here we are in step two. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone wish to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I'll close it to public testimony and open it up to commission discussion. Would you like to start? At this point, I don't have any. I'm satisfied with it. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Manifest. That's all right. Commissioner No, I don't have any, op any opposition to competition and business, so not much else to say. Okay. I agree. I, it's, uh, I, I assumed that it was business that was there already, and uh, there seems to be the hours won't, won't impact the parking there, uh, and also they can park in the rear of the, uh, of the area, so I don't think it'll be a concern, and nobody's here to speak against it, so I guess they're, uh, other than, you did say we had a letter, a couple of letters? Okay. How many did we get? I, I don't know the exact number. Maybe about eight. Yeah. Approximately. And they were from the other business owners in the area? Uh, primarily one other business owner and patrons of that business owner. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We'll close it to commission reports. And uh, can we have a, a motion to approve? Motion, motion by Castellanos. Second. second by Menifee. All in favor? Let me, let me give you the Aye. reso number there. And we need the resolution number? Yeah. The resolution number is 13 dash 5509 and then you can go ahead and take the vote again if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, we have a motion to approve uh, <coughs> resolution number 13-5509. Motion. Motion by Castellano, second. second by Menifee. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 4-0. <clears throat> Good luck with your business. Thank you. Brings us to item number five. This is precise plan, <clears throat> excuse me, number 13-01, variance number 13-04, categorical exemption, applicant Amar <coughs> Lapsey for Cottage Development Incorporated, location 131 and 122 North Lang Avenue. The request is for approval of a precise plan to allow the conversion of a 14,450 square foot warehouse office building to a medical office facility and construction of a parking lot. Additionally, the applicant is requesting a variance from certain standards, including parking and setback standards. The project is in the neighborhood commercial zone. May we hear a staff report, please? Yes, Associate Planner Ron Garcia will be presenting <clears throat> that report. Good evening, Chairman and members of the Commission. Uh, the applicant is requesting the approval of a precise plan to allow the uh, conversion of a 14,450 square foot uh, warehouse uh, office building to a medical office facility uh, as well as construction of a parking lot. Uh, in addition, a variance has been requested uh, to deviate from the parking and yard standards. Uh, the subject properties are located um, at the intersection of uh, North Lang uh, Avenue and West Harbord Street, uh, directly north of the I-10. This is an aerial of the proposal. This is the uh, existing warehouse office building uh, proposed to be converted, and this is the vacant lot uh, proposed to, uh, to be a parking lot. The uh, subject property is currently developed as a two-story warehouse office building uh, and a vacant lot. Uh, the property has been maintained and used as a warehouse office uh, building. Uh, the subject property uh, includes a driveway approach uh, on Lang Avenue, here and on Orange. Uh, parking is located along the northerly property, uh, abutting single-family zone, which is uh, 
located along uh, the property line here. The proposed floor plan includes a main lobby area, uh, exam rooms, urgent care, uh, pediatrics, and a pharmacy on the first floor, as well as administrative offices, uh, and an employee lounge on the second floor. Uh, the floor plan on and specific types of medical uses will likely vary uh, over time. Uh, three new 25-foot tall entryways are located uh, on Orange, Lang, and the center of the building facing the parking lot. Those located, uh, there'll be a main entryway located here off of Lang. There'll be a main entry located off of Orange, uh, as well as an entryway located at the center of the building facing the parking in this area here as well as a, an opening uh, on, uh, in this area as well. The proposed parking lot uh, is directly east of the subject property. Uh, a total of 38 parking spaces um, are proposed. Uh, the parking lot drive approach is located on Lang Avenue. Uh, the two drive approaches located on Harbor Street will be removed and replaced with a uh, curb. Uh, excuse me for the presentation here. This is a proposed parking lot. A total of 38 spaces are proposed. Uh, again, this is Harbor Street and Lang. There are two existing driveway approaches off of Harbor, which will be uh, proposed to be closed off. And the main entryway for the parking lot would be off of Lang uh, here. The zoning code requires uh, a total of 75 uh, spaces for the proposed project. Um, On-site parking consists of 30 spaces, and off-site parking, again, consists of 38 spaces. Uh, the applicant is proposing a total of 68 uh, spaces. Uh, the proposed development, therefore, would have a deficit of seven total parking spaces. Uh, the requested consideration uh, to de deviate from the parking requirements uh, would be covered uh, uh, in the staff report later. Uh, the traffic consulting firm of Koonsman and Associates uh, prepared a traffic analysis uh, for the proposed project. Uh, the study examined uh, current weekday and weekend average and peak period traffic generation at the subject site. Um, in summary, uh, the proposed medical office building AM peak hour trips uh, would be 37 uh, trips. Uh, the PM peak hour trips for the proposal uh, is a total of 116 uh, for a total vehicle trip for the project of four, 451 trips. The traffic analysis found that the proposed imaging, uh, excuse me, the proposed medical office building uh, resulted in 451 new daily trips, again 37 weekday AM peak hour trips and 116 weekday uh, PM peak hour trips. Uh, the study concludes that the proposed project will not result in any significant uh, weekday peak hour uh, traffic impacts. In addition to the traffic uh, study that was prepared, uh, an always stop warrant analysis uh, was prepared uh, by the consulting firm. Uh, the analysis evaluated the intersections of North Lang Avenue and West Harbor Street, um, again, which is uh, indicated on the slide here, Harbor and Lang. Uh, the city requested the analysis to determine if the three-way stop is warranted uh, at that intersection. Uh, the, an the analysis found that the area intersection uh, pedestrian volume will increase with the addition of the proposed parking lot and the existing speed of vehicles within the residential area uh, currently exceeds the residential <laughs> district speed limit. Uh, a condition of approval has been uh, included in the precise plan uh, requiring that the applicant submit a request to the city's traffic commission uh, for consideration of adding a three-way stop at the intersection. As in indicated uh, previously, uh, there are two variances that the applicant is requesting. Uh, the first is to deviate from, uh, uh, from yard, landscape yard standards and parking. Um, the municipal code requires that a five-foot wide landscape area uh, be provided along uh, the property line of commercial lots uh, and the code requires a six-foot landscape buffer be installed where residential properties are adjacent to commercial development. Now those yard standards, uh, the applicant is requesting where that landscape planner is located is along Harbor. Uh, again, 
the code requires uh, five feet. Uh, the applicant is uh, requesting to deviate from that uh, to maximize uh, the number of parking spaces uh, for this vacant lot. The second uh, variance for yard um, is along the northerly property line where the parking spaces are located, which is uh, abutting residential, resi residentially zoned properties. Again, uh, the code requires a six foot landscape buffer. Uh, and again, the applicant is requesting to deviate from uh, that requirement. Uh, grinding a variance, again, will allow the applicant to develop the parking lot parcel and also to maximize the number of parking spaces. Uh, the grinding of the variance for the medical building site uh, will allow for the site layout to remain in its current uh, configuration um, and that it's existing. Uh, second, uh, parking. Uh, the applicant, again, is requesting that variance to deviate from uh, the parking required. Um, in summary, the zoning code requires medical office uses to provide a greater, uh, greater number of parking spaces per square foot uh, than administrative office, uh, as a medical office typically generates uh, higher uh, turnover. Uh, based on the proposal of the conversion of the building, uh, the proposal would require 75 parking spaces where 68 are provided. Uh, given the existing building uh, and the parking layout, uh, the site does not have the ability to create additional on-site parking. Um, although not allowed uh, to be included in the parking calculations, uh, off-street parking is available. Uh, staff uh, estimated a total of 12 off-street parking spaces um, were present at the site. The medical office building uh, is in compliance uh, with the zoning standards, uh, with the exception of uh, parking and minimum yard standards. Uh, given the size and shape of the lot, uh, staff believes that there are exceptional circumstances on the subject property uh, and the parking lot. Uh, the subject property is existing and has been designed to be compatible with the commercial buildings in the vicinity. Uh, the proposed parking lot will replace a vacant underutilized lot. Uh, the conversion of the warehouse office building to a medical office will provide additional uh, medical services to the residents of the area. Uh, staff recommends that the Planning Commission uh, adopt resolutions approving the precise plan and the uh, variance. That concludes staff's presentation. Uh, the applicant is present as well as the, um, a staff member from the engineering department if you have any further questions. Is there any further questions of staff? Yes, Commissioner Menefee. Uh, Mr. Garcia, when you count parking spaces, uh, do you do you take into consideration the street parking along Lang and, and as, Harbor? Yeah. As indicated in the staff report, um, the 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 code does not uh, allow for to count off street parking spaces. The only the the parking that is required has to come from the property itself. Yeah, maybe I just don't understand off street parking. I'm talking about street parking. Is that you're so, talking so about street, the same thing? Yes, yes. All right. Okay. Okay. It's just terminology. O off site parking or on site parking. Yeah. All so right. the code says they're, they're supposed to provide their own on site parking. Got it. Okay. Anyone else? I have, I have another one about the setbacks. Uh, you mentioned that there, was, there weren't the sufficient setbacks, but you didn't tell us how much variance are they looking for? So the variance that they're looking for um, specifically, um, especially specific to the uh, variance request along the northerly property line, the code requires that a six foot landscape buffer be provided when adjacent to residentially zoned properties. Yes. Currently, the, the set, the landscape buffer is five foot six inches. So we're talking about six inches difference. Oh, yeah. Correct. And the other? And the other, which is off of Harbor, the code requires that a five foot landscape buffer be provided uh, along Harbor. And there, the code, re uh, there the applicant is proposing a five foot six inch. Now let me be, let me, uh, uh, be specific on that. Even though it's providing five foot six inch. Uh, yeah, three foot six inches. Okay, thank you. Um, you cannot, the project cannot account for the um, two-foot overhang, which requ is required for the depth of the parking space. 
So you can't uh, uh, account for that landscape buffer, right. even though it is. It looks like it's a larger landscape buffer, but two feet of that is being taken for the depth of the the parking spaces that are located. Uh, these parking spaces yeah. that are here. Right. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? I have a few questions on the on the east wall of that parking there where there's uh, homes or something behind it, is there gonna be a wall there? Right. There's no wall there now? There is a wall. Okay. And how high is that wall now? Okay. Okay. Um, the other thing on the where the building is, that other slide where the actual building is, you bring that up. On the north wall there, where you said it's five foot six inches high, right now. On the bottom, on the north end, right? Yeah, there. Yeah. So they're only they're only six inches out of variance. Is that what you're saying? No, it's not a wall. It's the landscape. Okay. Because behind. That wall, even though it's residential right there, uh, there's a some type of limo uh, company right there. There's a big bus back there and some limousines and all that. So it looks like it's kind of used for a combination commercial residential, that particular <laughs> lot. I don't think it goes all the way through to orange, so it probably only goes halfway through. For the purpose of our discussion, that, that lot is zoned residential. It is residential, and they are allowed to, to keep the limo buses and all that there. I guess I'd reiterate, say it's zone residential. Yes, Typically, those types okay. of activities are I not. I just was wondering because I saw the, the big tour bus there and all that. Um, what else did I ever? Oh, on the, seven, on the 68 spaces that they're going to provide, do we have any idea how many of those will be used by the employees? Uh, from what the applicant has uh, proposed and indicated, uh, that the off-street parking spaces, uh, the proposed parking lot, would be utilized for employees first uh, to allow parking spaces where the subject, where the medical office building would be used for patients, uh, patronizing the the, uh, the services there. Okay. Do we have any estimates on how many patients would be there in a day, or, and versus how many employees? So we know how, what the total volume would be for the parking spaces? I think that might be a better question for the applicant okay. to respond to. So no, we, we don't know what numbers. And, and keep in mind, this is a use that will change over time, but, but the applicant probably has an idea of how many patients might be there and how many doctors and employees might be there. Okay. And then uh, just to verify, I think on the side streets there, it, it's, there's no parking on Tuesdays for uh, street sweeping, so that would impact any off-street parking. Or, okay. Let's see if I have anything else there. No, I guess that's it. Oh, okay, Commissioner. Just one more question. Uh, as far as the vacant lot, how long has that been vacant? Uh, I'm not aware of how long it's been, but it's been from about 15 years. Yeah, it's been a long time. It's I know there was a fire there at one time yeah. in that lot. Okay. Yeah. And there won't, there's no wall required on uh, on Lang on the uh, west side, right? Or am I, pardon? That is correct. So there's no wall. Uh, okay. The applicant is proposing, um, it doesn't look as large, but the applicant is proposing a small landscape planner um, on Lang with a wall. Uh, well, hold your comments. Okay. Any other questions? Commissioner Vellas? Yes, I have a question. Is the uh, warehouse being uh, used right now, or is it empty? Yes. That would probably be a, a question you want to ask the um, what the current status is uh, from the applicant. It, uh, as, far, as far as we know, it's being used now, but the applicant might be able to respond to that because they've been in touch with the current property owner. Okay. I can comment. It is being occupied by a business right now. It used to be uh, Speed Automotive years ago that was in there. They went out of business, and this new electrical solar type of company is in there right now. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, staff? 
Huh? Okay. I'm going to open up to uh, public testimony. Would the applicant like to come up and talk about the project? State your name, please. Amar Lopsy. Um, members of the planning staff, members of the planning commission, my name is Amar Lopsy. I represent Cottage Development, Inc. I'm here with Dr. Lopsywala. He's the chief executive officer for Cottage Development, Inc. I'm here with Richard San Luis, who is the um, proposed general contractor for the project. And we've also invited Mr. Koonsman. Uh, he is the traffic engineer that was commissioned to do the traffic, traffic and parking analysis for this project. <clears throat> I want to start off by saying that I was actually raised in this community, and it's very important to me. I spent a predominant amount of my childhood. I attended South Hills High School in West Covina, so I have a good kinship with this area. Um, we did a former project on 1700 West West, Quine, West Covina Parkway entitled Center Lake Imaging, which was just recently completed, and it gives a testimony to the, uh, the attention we put to our projects. Uh, we feel that it was a beautiful addition to the city, and I hope you do as well. The project we're proposing here today is a medical development, uh, a 14,500 square foot facility. We're essentially repurposing a warehouse, an industrial warehouse uh, that uh, has been in existence for over 15 or 20 years. We're not asking for a change in zoning. We're not asking for a change in use. The medical use is permitted under the NRC designation. Uh, we feel that the medical use is consistent with the area. There is a home health center that borders on this property. There's a DaVita or a Covina Dialysis Center within minutes. There's a Kaiser. Citrus Valley Hospital is very close by. So you see that this area is becoming a hot spot for medical activity. Uh, we want to do something that's harmonious to the community with appealing architecture that can possibly enhance the values of the homeowners around us. Uh, we want to comply with all the reasonable requests and recommendations from planning staff and city council and to make this project the best for this community. Um, we complied with all the requirements thus far, including a extensive traffic and parking analysis. So we ask that you approve our project and we'll comply with any uh, reasonable requests. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Of, uh... I do. Okay. I do. Commissioner Menefee? I noticed a pharmacy uh, as part of your structure. Is that pharmacy available to people who are not there to see uh, medical doctors for another reason? That, that's correct. It's right. open to the public, and we accept non-insured patients as well. So, Thank you. Could I ask where your clientele are, will, will come from? Predominantly this area. We're, we're looking to provide general care, so primary care services. Uh, we have a pediatric suite that's proposed in urgent care, so it caters to all ranges, all scopes of services. So it's not it's not necessarily a referral from like county or someplace else. That's that's not uh, that's not correct. It, it, patients don't require a referral to go to our okay. facility. All right, thank you. I do have a question, Commissioner Kessler. Go ahead. Uh, as far as the urgent care, what hours will the urgent care be open? We haven't defined the scope of the urgent care. Typically, it can be available 12 to 5, 12 to 6. We haven't yet, you know, set. A, a strict time schedule in front of us yet. Yeah. Commissioner Valles. That was one of the questions I was going to ask you about the urgent care. Right. Also, another question I had in mind is that I saw the blueprints that you had out. I lay them out and I saw them. I didn't see whether you're going to have a lab there. Is your are you going to have a lab? Uh, it's not on the proposed set of plans. We don't plan to do a lab. And what hours is this going to be open? Typical medical hours are 9 to 5, uh, close for lunch for about an hour. Um, we don't try to stray from those general hours. Okay, thank you. And uh, the question I asked earlier, how many employees do you anticipate having there? About 12. 12 for the whole facility, including doctors and everybody? You want to break it down? Yeah, I'm going to bring Dr. Lopsiel up to the podium. Okay. I'd like to know because of the parking situation. May I? Sure. State your name, please. Well, my name is Dr. Lapsuwala. I've been in this community for about 35 years. I've been, uh, I've been a part of this community for 35 years. Uh, we have built several similar buildings in Covina, West Covina area. 
we are trying to confirm with the community rather than stick out as a sole point. This particular location, it is an industrial. They make uh, engine, uh, re rebuild the engine, transmission, and other things. On the contrary, this is a, a very quiet uh, business uh, venture here, starting from about 8, 8.30 to about 5, about 5 6 o'clock. Uh, not everything we're going to run at the same time. We have pharmacy, and by state law, we cannot own the pharmacy. Pharmacy has to be a different owner. And it is on the, uh, uh, on the orange side. So th that particular traffic would not come on that side, uh, even if the pe public comes from outside. Similarly, we also have a skin and uh, a laser clinic. Naturally, you know, you may get two or three or four patients a day. That's probably considered very plenty because laser and skin removal and this and that. Besides that, we have an urgent care center which we will be starting when nobody else is around, like 12 to 6. People have gone for lunch or something. We have a primary care, and a primary care, it, it, it all depends because we have several, uh, uh, two or three physicians can work at the same time. Uh, what we had decided is not to interrupt uh, or disrupt the, the community. The parking lot on the Lang Avenue, it is exclusively for employee. Uh, this used to be, I, I don't know if some people would know, Dr. Forrest Tennant's office here before. Uh, this this uh, Lang Avenue. Forrest Tennant is a friend of mine. But, so we talk about it. Historically, he used to do with the drug addiction and everything else. What we, special precautions we took in, in olden days, there was an exit on the Herbert and, and very close to the Herbert. What we did is we kept it very close to Garvey. So the people will enter and exit from there. They would not even come very close to Herbert. Uh, so that's a precaution we took. Another thing is right now on the main building, there, there is a sort of a wrought iron gate and everything else. We're going to take that out. Let's make it like, right now it look, almost looks like a prison. You know, <laughs> big, big fencing all around and everything. We are going to put it in such a way that the building looks really nice, predominantly more so on the orange, orange side, because orange side is mostly a commercial side. If you really look at it, this is in the continuity of the commercial structures. There is a, a big... Uh, a, a, a sort of a commercial center. Behind them, there is a, there is a radio uh, a studio a, a, a store there. Next to, just behind me, on, or south side of us, is also a home health care and everything else too. That, that too. So we are just right there and there. The most important thing is we like to leave the building the way it is because I think uh, uh, it is uh, better to use the resources what they were already laid in. That's, and, and that's the reason why we selected this building. There's ample parking, uh, uh, and, and there would not be any disruption of the community. On the on other side of the Lang Avenue, it's not depicted. There's a hotel or motel there. On, I'm talking about on, on the left side of, the, of that. There's a hotel and motel with a big wall on that side. On the main building, on the residential side, there's a six-feet wall. We're also going to make sure that uh, our illumination of parking lot will have a low directional light. It will not flood up the whole community with the light, you know, that kind of thing. So our light will be a little bit low and, and a focused light rather than, rather than spreading light. So we do understand that people are living in this area and we want to make sure they live with a harmony and, and, and conformity that we do not disturb the people. Uh, so if you have any question, I'll be more than happy to answer this. The other project we have done is in Covina and, and uh, Holland Beck and Arrow. Uh, another one we did is on San Bernardino. There's one on Badillo. Uh, the, the, the one you see, Central Lake, right on very first building, 1700 West Covina, we just finished. And we'll work with the staff. We want to make sure that we follow all the codes and everything else. We like to beautify our building in such a way that we all could be proud of, because we are the, the residents of this community too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. Questions? Okay. That will close the uh, it'll open the public testimony. Uh, does anybody want to speak in favor of the project? I have one card here from Chris Cavanaugh. I'm not sure if he's for or she's he or she is for or against. Yes. Against? Okay. 
right. <clears throat> Geneva Wood, you're up once before. Please state your name. My name is Geneva Wood. I live at 218 North Lang. <clears throat> this gentleman said he had lived here for 35 years. Well, we've lived on Lang for 47 years, and we have other neighbors who have lived there longer. And it's been a wonderful little street, and I, I believe it was said that uh, there would be four, 415 uh, cars coming by there each day and it's not going to impact the traffic. I don't know who the traffic analysts are, but I don't believe that for a minute. And uh, uh, people go, I can just see them going up and down the street, speeding uh, past our street and, and parking, you know, everywhere. And, and I, I definitely think that um, any variance for, against, for um, the uh, I can't think. The plants and so forth should not be given. This should be made as beautiful as possible. And the, the pretty part shouldn't be re reduced. They should be expanded, if anything. So I am totally against this. Thank you. Over the traffic? What are you talking about? Uh, one, of the, one of our staff members want to speak in favor of it. Oh, in favor? She didn't say that. Okay. Yeah. Did you want to speak in favor of the project? I'm sorry. I didn't know that. I didn't have a card. Hi. Good evening, Chairman and Commissioners. I'm Paulina Morales, and I'm with the Community Development Commission. I'm here this evening to speak in favor of this project. The CDC has been working with the applicant in converting the former bank building at 1700s. Um, West Covina Parkway, the Center Lake Imaging Medical Office. And as if they've proven to build quality projects, I hope you will uh, follow staff's recommendation and approval. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone else in favor? In favor of the project? Okay, did you fill out a card? Okay, you know what? I'll call your name in a minute. Uh, okay, we had Geneva Wood. Paul Lozano? Hello. See here. I am a homeowner living on Lang Avenue. I'm here today to oppose the current medical building and parking lot on Lang Avenue. It is bad enough with the current buildings on our street. We are already suffering from strange people in our neighborhood, which has caused our mail to be stolen and increased excessive speeders on the block. I have also had an incident that the police had to be called out to my home. Since our houses do not have sidewalks, people visiting the current office buildings are parking in front of our homes, lying on lawns, and drinking alcohol like if it was a park. They are also leaving trash, dirty diapers, etc. I have also had to go down to the post office because the car is parking in front of my home. The mailman left me a slip stating that my mailbox was being blocked by cars that were no longer that they were no longer going to deliver my curbside mail. I had to inform them that I had no control of people parking in front of the mailbox. I understand you want to put a parking lot, but the majority of people don't like to park in the direct sunlight. People look for shaded places, like under trees that are currently in front of our homes, which means the current situa situation will not stop, and in fact will increase because with the medical building there, there will be more people coming and going on the block. Increasing, tra increasing traffic, stealing of our mail, speeders, which may jeopardize our children in the neighborhood. We are also going from the current home security systems to cameras being installed around our homes. Our homes are supposed to be safe haven for us with the current situation by approving the medical building. The traffic will have us stressing every time we leave our home. And this could possibly decrease the value of our homes due to the traffic possibly calling the police to our homes from stolen mail or houses being broken into. Please help us keep our neighborhood safe and traffic free. And I also would like to bring up that they mentioned hours that they're going to stay open. Is there going to be any ambulance services there since they have uh, urgent care? Uh, what are the health hazards, your biohazards? The parking lot they want to install, is that going to be under 24-hour watch? Because with an open parking lot, you're going to invite all the weekend revelries there. And that'll be it. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Carol Graves. Good evening, and thank you for allowing us to speak. I have been living on Lang Avenue since 1947. My dad built the house there. My husband and I bought the house in 1966. Our neighborhood, I'm sure that some of you have probably driven into the neighborhood, hopefully, to see what it's like. It's a very well-kept neighborhood. And um, we have... <laughs> had problems before. I can remember the DMV at the end of our street and when it was time for renewal, when everybody renewed at the same time, we had to keep our children in the house. We couldn't allow them out of the house. Obviously, I don't have children at home anymore. Uh, but there is such a distressing thing to me to think that we're going to have extra strangers in our neighborhood. We already have problems that Paul described. We have dirty diapers already. <laughs> and um, people just throw trash out. And um, our neighborhood is one of the last areas that is kept up very nicely in our area. Um, I obviously have been a resident many, many years, so have seen many changes. And this change I do not wish to see. Um, and you wouldn't want it in your neighborhood. And if you stop and think about all of the medical buildings that we have here in West Covina, we visit quite a few doctors and say the Maxon building, it has lots of empty places in it. Um, the building on the corner of Merced and um, Sunset, there's empty places there. There's lots of medical buildings in our area and we don't need another one. So please consider turning this proposition down. Thank you. Thank you. Cynthia Esquivel. Did I pronounce that right? Hello, my name is Cynthia Esquivel and I live at 223 North Lang. Uh, I've been living on Lang for 30 years this year, and uh, I've never seen um, so much um, traffic in the last 10 years like we have now. Um, we are getting these big trucks that are coming down our residential uh, streets. We just had our street stood not too long ago. Now we're getting these big tree, uh, trucks from this building along with the St. Clair or the paint shop along with uh, the sleep, sit and sleep, and they're coming down Lang. My understanding is trucks that weigh over a certain amount of weight are not supposed to be driving down residential streets. Uh, we're getting a lot of more traffic, like when there's accidents on the freeway, they're coming down Lang. So with this new proposition that they want to be, bring another medical center, I agree with Mrs. With, uh, um, Mrs. Graves that, you know, we have more than enough medical facilities in West Covina, and I feel that, West Covina, that medical centers do not belong, even though it's a commercial, little commercial piece of property, should be in a residential area. Garvey has, uh, is a very quiet, I mean, with the exception of a couple of hotels there that, you know, have their, their rowdies. But uh, buses, the, the school buses come by. One bus comes by to drop off our kids from Monte Vista. Uh, yeah, yeah, Monte Vista. And uh, comes racing down the street. I have to call the district and report it. So we don't need a lot of this stuff. I've had my mail stolen a couple of times, and uh, again, the post office complains about people parking in front of our mailboxes. So at this, at this time, um, we don't need this. We, we don't need any more traffic than we already have, and I certainly don't want anybody parking in front of my street or across the street not knowing who's there. I mean, we should know who parks on our streets and feel safe that we know it's our neighbors and not somebody that's going to be parked there overnight uh, or coming in and out of uh, our um, 
our neighborhood there. And I would hate to see a block, somebody come up, suggest, well, we'll put up a barrier, because I heard that once before, is that they were gonna put up a barrier. We don't need a little cul-de-sac there. We need to go up and down our street. And we need to tell our people that live uh, or work in those, uh, that little shopping center that if they're going to have these big semi-trucks or big trucks come by, that they should not be rude to us. I had one tell me, I uh, was sitting there reading the paper in the middle of the, of the street, and I asked him to please move. And he told me, go around. I said, excuse me? I'm not going around your truck. You're on a private street. You need to get your bleep, bleep out of the way. Now well, move on. You're, you're causing traffic has uh, traffic uh, uh, problems here. So again, I'm totally, totally against this. And uh, um, I took some time off, you know, to come in and speak for the first time with the city council. Never bitched or complained about anything. But this, I'm, I don't want. I really don't want it. That lot has been vacant for 15 years, and it's nobody's done nothing. I even have to call the city. Will you come cut the grass? Will you come fix the fence? So let's put something else that'll benefit us in, in the community than another medical center. Thank you very much. Thank you. Chris Cavanaugh. How are you guys all doing? Good. Thank you. I've been a resident of uh, West Covina for 58 years. I got married in West Covina, bought a house in West Covina on Lang Street. 236 North Lang. I lived across the street from what is Mr. Lang's old property. It's a big old ranch. Oranges. Everything. I'm sure you guys have seen it. But our street now is getting out of control from what's going on down the street. I don't know what can be done with it, but I surely don't want this going on down there because like everybody says here, and this is my community, they all say the same thing. We have strangers parking in our streets. We have people blocking our mailboxes. It's, it's not right. Lang Street has been here since day one. We really, really don't need it. You got Levitt's empty. Put a medical office in there. You've got hundreds of empty, empty buildings around here. Put it over there. Why ruin a community that's been around for 50, 60 years? You know, what are you guys going to do when the freeway comes in? What are they going to do down there? No one's heard what's going to go on down there. That's going to change things, too. You know, we just want our private little community. Been there a long, long time. I'm sure you guys all heard of Edna, Edna Glassburner. You know, she's the one that's been on that street for 60 years. We, we don't want it. No one in this community wants it. You know, how many employees? How many more cars? What are they going to do at the end of our street? It's going to be another empty building after five years? You know, we've already put up, how are you going to put up, how are you going to build something like this when you got that paint store right there that drives semis down there? I pulled over a guy the other day, going down my street, 60 foot semi, and I go, sir, you know that's a $500 fine? He goes, I don't care. Because he didn't want to turn around. He didn't want to deal with it. Sit and sleep. We have trucks up and down it all the time. The YMCA that's right there, they've actually hit my boys back, well, this is 15 years ago. When my boys were backing out of my driveway, they slammed into them. You know, something's got to be done around here. And I know that the freeway project, that's going to change all kinds of stuff down there. Uh, right? So I, I don't know. Um, I would like to keep the community the same as what it is. Thank you. Thank you. That's the last of the cards that I have. Anybody else want to speak on it? Come on up. <coughs> I ask that you fill out a card when you get done. Please state your name. Uh, my name is Fernando Ochoa. Uh, good evening, gentlemen, ma'am. 
Um, I've been on Lang for about 20 years now. Um, I'm a Los Angeles police officer, and one of my duties is, uh, as a senior lead is I, I deal with quality of life issues. And this is what we're talking about um, for our street. Uh, I appreciate all the businesses that he has created and all the monies he's brought in for the city, but he's brought them into areas that don't impact the neighborhoods. And that's what this is going to do. It's going to impact our neighborhood. He mentioned uh, urgent care. We all know urgent care is for off hours uh, assistance. You check some of the urgent cares around here, and they're open till midnight. And that's what I'm afraid what's going to happen on our street. Um, a couple of days ago, or, or a month ago, I had to call West Covina Police for a drunk man on my lawn from down the street. And it's one of those things that we're trying to deal with in our community is quality of life. The other places he's built in other areas that don't affect neighborhoods. And unfortunately, this is going to affect our neighborhood. I raised three children on my, in my house, and I know there's some other families that are even closer to this location. And again, it's about quality of life, and that's what we want to preserve on our street here on Lane. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have one other card, Rebecca Urek. Did I pronounce that right? <coughs> Hi. Um, my name is Rebecca Yurak. Um, I lived on 145 North Lang Avenue. My parents bought it when I was born. Um, so we've been there a long time. I was raised there. I grew up in that house. I've always felt safe in that house. Now I've got two little girls that I'm bringing up in that house. And I want to keep them safe. I want them to feel safe. I know it wasn't discussed, but on that corner, Lang and Herbert, that's where the bus picks up my kids every day. And that's where it drops them off every afternoon. All the other kids in the neighborhood get picked up on the bus and dropped off on that corner. It just doesn't sound like a good idea to me. I, I don't want it. I want to feel safe in my neighborhood. I want them to be safe. We used to be able to play and run around on that street. And we can't now. Um, they, they've asked for a couple deviances from the landscaping and the parking. Right there, we should shut it down because those 12 parking spots are going to be in front of my house. And they're not going to be able to play. They're not going to be safe riding their bikes because they can't see because there's parks, cars parked. I'm completely against it. I just wish you would please look at it really closely and think about the neighborhood that it's going to impact. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening, gentlemen. Right. Please state your name. Jose Mora. I'm at Jose Mora. I'm at 17, uh, 217 North Lang. I've been there for 17 years. Um, all I could say, my neighbors have already spoken everything that I could have said, um, other than by what the doctor here says that his employees, I just see our neighborhood becoming a parking lot. I have the little kids, and if something was to happen, to any of them because of his establishment. I just want to know who to sue. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Come on up. Would you please fill out a card, please, for us with your name, sir? I did, sir. Oh, did you? Thank you. Hi, my name is Annette Morales, and I live at 139 North Lang, which is going to be right next door to this facility. Um, I really uh, am against this project because since living in, on Lang, it's such a quiet neighborhood right now. And it's even though we, we have sit and sleep and we have other businesses around, it still is, it has maintained its quiet, peaceful um, community appeal. With this project, I could just imagine how many people are going to be coming in and out all day long. Um, there's going to be diapers and trash on our lawn, just like another um, a community service uh, agency was there in the same building. And we had so, much, so many problems with them just hanging out and just throwing things on our lawn and making our neighborhood um, very unsafe. I used to see people coming in and out at all, all, even in the evenings when it's supposed to be closed. Another thing I anticipate is whenever there's a parking lot 
and whenever a uh, business closes, that just brings trouble because a lot of you know, kids, young kids around around the neighborhood, you know, uh, teenagers could go and park there, smoke there, you know, drink there. So, you know, I really feel that this should not be put in a residential um, area. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Come on up. Please state your name and, if, if you will, fill out a card when you're done. I'm Robert Koonsman, a Koonsman Associates. We uh, looked at the traffic for the site. Thanks. And I just wanted to discuss the quality of... Are you speaking of, in favor? You're going to give a traffic report or what? Well, I'm just, I wanted to talk about quality of life, traffic volumes. As far as in favor of the project? Yeah. Okay, let me, let me finish if there's anybody okay. else against. Okay, sure. Anybody else against? Okay, come on back up, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just, I just wanted to go over the standards for uh, quality of life from a traffic point of view. Uh, a two-lane roadway typically handles about 12,000 cars a day. Uh, in a residential area where driveways actually access the, the roadway, they take that down to about 1,200 cars a day. Uh, with the projected project, we are a maximum of 652 cars a day south of Lang. That would be uh, with the cars that would utilize the off-site parking lot. That would be a total of 652. The actual intersection of Lang would have uh, about 482 cars. So it's about a third. The intersection of Lang is about a third volume of the quality of life standards for a residential neighborhood. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Would the applicant like to come up and speak again? <coughs> I heard the concern from one of the uh, nearby neighbor saying that there are going to be a speed out of control. We have taken that into particular consideration. We are putting a four-way stop. On the contrary, the traffic would be more regulated than before because there are going to be a four-way stop in, at, at a junction of Lang and Herbert. Another thing is right now what you are hearing is a complaint even before we moved in. Here what we are doing is we are adding 40 more parking which nobody is using it because we have another lot where we're going to be using party parking. What I like to tell them that I think the thing's going to be better rather than worse because right now, uh, you know, people are parking in front of the houses and, and the mailbox and everything else because there's not enough in, in parking. We are almost more than doubling up the parking. Another thing is we are going to be putting Orange Avenue as a main address. People will be entering from that. All the patients will be coming from that side and leaving from that side too. Lang Avenue is only for employee parking. It will be employee parking only. So I think uh, I, I know they're scared because uh, like a lot of people are kind of parking in front of the houses. But I think the thing is going to be better with us moving in right now. It's, it's almost like an auto, automotive factory, you know, rebuilding the engine and transmissions and, and, and whatnot. We have not occupied the space right now, by the way. Thank you. Uh, question, sir? Question? Are you saying that the additional parking lot is only going to be for employees? Yes. Only for employees? It, uh, it, okay. Additional parking lot will be employees. That means they'll be coming from that side. Okay. All the 30 parking will be putting a sign for, 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 for a patients only on, on, on the premises. Uh, so we, our project is in two parts. One is a main building and one of is a parking lot. On a main building, we'll be putting a sign there, patients parking only, because that, you know, and customers need to be closest to a, to a business. Employee will be coming on a Lang Avenue. They will come in the morning, go for lunch, or, or stay on a premises, and, and go home in the evening. Uh, and, and, and I think uh, this, is, this is what we intend to do. Thank you. One other question. What, what are your urgent care hours going to be? We don't even know for sure we're going to come at urgent care. Uh, this is an express care. Uh, the new term coming out, this is not an emergency room, if you are confusing with. This is a doctor's office at the odd time. When, when, when at the lunchtime our regular office is closed, then, then we're going to be open up from 12 to about 6 o'clock because some people might come a little bit late from the job. So we, we extend till about 6 o'clock. Maybe, you know, so by the time the, you know, they wrap up everything else and go up, maybe 6, 6.30. So after 6 o'clock or 
there won't be anybody there to take somebody well, in or pharmacy care. may stay open on, on one uh, pharmacy is going to be on uh, on the orange side the pharmacy for what hours the pharmacy may stay open till say, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, but they're, they're, it's on the orange side only. And ph pharmacy only occupies about maybe 1,200 square feet. I understand it, but what about urgent care? Uh, ur urgent care would be uh, uh, what I was you talking about? Yes. But by, by 6 o'clock, 6.30, it will be done, okay. 6 o'clock. And will there ever be any ambulance service coming in there? Pardon? Will there ever be any ambulance service coming no, in there? there? It will not be unless, unless somebody has a heart attack who is who's coming to see the patient. Not, not a, this, is, this is the urgent care. Do not confuse with the, with the emergency room. This is a doctor's office okay. at, at, the odd, at the odd time the doctor is not available. Right. I just no, wanted to clarify for the no, audience. No, there will not be ambulance run. Okay. Uh, unless somebody has a CPR, I mean, unless you have a cardiac arrest or something. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions while he's up? Anybody? No. Okay. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Vallis? Yeah. <clears throat> In regards to the medical building, you know, that was what I used to do before. I used to be a bilingual interpreter for medical field. I work at hospitals. And I, what I can see, I do respect everyone's opinion. But what I can see is that you're mistaking the type of people that will be walking into a medical building. Commissioner Vallis, could I ask you to hold that till we have commission discussion? Oh, all right. That's the time to, okay. to do that, okay? Thank you. All right, I saw a hand up over here. Come on up. You have something to say. Okay, um, I'm a resident also. My husband. Please state your name. Francine Lozano. He spoke to you earlier. Um, they're already coming off. Um, you could tell right now as they were talking. First, the one gentleman said that the facility would be open until 5 o'clock. Now this gentleman came back up and he said till 6 o'clock. Then he went to 6.30 before he left you guys for the urgent care after he was trying to avoid answering the question. I want to let you know that it already seems that he's already fibbing, in other words, as far as just so he can get his facility approved. You, you know more than anybody else. Once the facility is approved, then they start changing their hours little by little. Um, he says, too, about avoiding ambulance service. That's another thing. Uh, urgent care, if the person is very, very sick, you call an ambulance to get sent to the hospital. So there is going to be ambulance ringing their little bell throughout the, the, the time. Who knows? We don't know yet how, how much of it, but it, it will be done. Well, ma'am, ma'am, let me just address that, okay? What he said is they're going to close at 5, but it may be another half hour before they yeah. clean up and, you know, close the doors. Yeah, but they're they not going to be taking any patients after that time. So they say. Yeah. Okay. That's what they're saying But now. if they do change, they have to come back to the city and get approval if they're going to change their hours. They just and can't do it on their own. Send us another letter in the mail yeah. stating? Please, sir. Are you going to be sending us another letter in the mail stating that they're going to change their hours? Is that a question, Jeff? Because we're being Hold on, please. Time. You ask a question. Oh, I would suggest uh, taking her input and then closing the hearing before we start having a discussion okay. of questions right. and answers. Thank you very much. Would you please follow her? about the parking lot. He just said that that parking lot that was going to be on Harbor is now uh, for employees only. And that the majority of the people that are going are going to be going down orange instead of down lane. So there's another fib. Well, <laughs> Come on, you have to protect our neighborhood. That's all we're asking is to protect our neighborhood. Protect our neighborhood. The, he says he has other facilities on San Bernardino. Go look at those streets. There are four lanes. There's two on one side and two on the other side where his other facilities are. They're not in a quiet. I understand it's partially commercial residential. But that's on that type of the thing. Is he going to put, when you're coming out of Lang, an arrow that says you can only turn right? This way there's no traffic le going left at all down our block? No, it's not going to be done. We have no sidewalks right now. So our children like to play out in the street and they like to ride their bikes. They're not going to be able to do that. The majority of children nowadays, they, they're sitting inside the house doing video games. Nothing is old school anymore the way you used to go get vitamin D and play outside and exercise. I know. Thank That's you. all I have to say. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. 
I'm going to close the public testimony and now open up the commission discussion. Who wants to start? Betty? Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. As I was saying, I do appreciate your remarks and your concerns. But you know what? Let me tell you. And like I stated, I used to work in the medical field. I used to be a bilingual interpreter in the medical field, and I've worked in many, many medical fields. The problem is that you're mis you've had very bad experience with some of the people that are walking in there. The people that come for, for, to the doctors for medical care, they're not the same people that you see driving a semi through your street, racing through your streets. They're concerned about their health. So, so oh, this is not, ma'am. <laughs> Ma'am, excuse me, this is not time for a rebuttal here. So please, you know, consider this. This is a medical building that we that would be a benefit for our community. Those are the that's, okay. that's it. Yeah. Wanna do it now, Jeff? Yeah, I think um, we knew when we looked at this site that there was going to be some issues, but uh, and I would say this, that part of the reason we knew that is because there's already an issue there now. The, the use that's there now, the, the, the way the structure is built now is not conducive to being next to a residential neighborhood. And I think from the testimony I've heard, that's what the testimony is about, that that building has been an issue. Um, the building's not going to go away and, and be converted into residential use. I think that's one thing we can all agree on. It's not going to be a residential use. It's going to be some kind of commercial use. Um, the staff's concern in looking at that is when you have a situation where you have a warehouse that has doors that open onto a residential lots, that that is sort of just a, a, a problem waiting to occur and probably has occurred in the past if I understand some of the history of the site. So that, that, that starts our, our analysis from there. Um, some of the other issues that I heard discussed here were that there are parking issues on the street. And I want to I want to um, take a minute to let Miguel Hernandez from our Public Works Department talk about that because there are there is an ability for a neighborhood to have uh, street parking uh, restrictions for only residents. And it sounds like that may be something that this neighborhood might be interested in now, whether or not this irrelevant of this building that's proposed or the, the conversion of the building, because I'm hearing that there's a lot of concern for parking as the situation is now, and that has nothing to do with the application before us. So I want to give um, Miguel a few minutes maybe to go over how that, that parking restrictions um, process works. Okay, first of all, um, I'd like to say that I'll be notifying the PD about trucks going through the neighborhood. That, that shouldn't be. Um, and hopefully they'll, they'll go out there and respond. Can you speak up a little bit, Miguel, please? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'll just get closer. <laughs> okay, uh, one mechanism we have that we use for restricting parking in neighborhoods is using a permit parking. It could be uh, different varieties. You could just say just overnight parking or just during the day. And what we do there is we'll take a request from the, from the resident and then what we'll do, we'll initiate a, a survey of all the residents that are affected by the restriction, and we'll ask them to return a postcard whether they're in favor of it or not in favor of it. And if it does get approved, what we'll do is we'll post no parking on certain hours, certain days, uh, with permit. And each resident will receive four free parking permits. And we understand sometimes there is parties that people have during a, the weekends or weeks, during the day, weekdays. We issue one-day permits for those too, so without any costs. So that's an option you guys can use. So what do we do if the big trucks come by? Do we call you? Uh, yeah, you can call me. You can call the Public Works Department. Yeah, yes. Call the Public Works. And we can we can discuss some of those things perhaps after the, as as we've been. This is a business meeting for the Planning Commission to make a decision. Um, but we we're available during the day if you have questions about those things. Um, so that's the process for having um, parking restrictions on the street. And if if those type of restrictions were adopted, 
then there wouldn't be an allowance for anyone to park in front of the houses that we're talking about here. And that, again, that's not even having anything to do with this project before us. So if there's an issue of concern, I would, I would strongly recommend that the residents talk about that together and, and see if they can work, uh, work through that. I so um, that, that's one issue. And, and I guess just to wrap up my comments, like I said at the beginning, we, we knew there was a, we thought there might be a concern here because of the situation, but we don't feel like the, the current setup with the warehouse bays facing on residential units is a very, um, is a very satisfactory or appropriate situation now. So uh, generally, warehouse uses are more intense and more, have more problems with neighboring residential uses than, than office or medical office. And, and if, if the parking problems can be fixed here, then maybe that, that gets a way towards understanding or uh, understanding what the difference in the, the two situations might be. It does sound like the key issue. Anyway. Uh, Commissioner Castellanos. Thank you. I definitely uh, can appreciate the concerns of the residents, uh, but it seems like there are multiple issues which you know, thank you, Miguel and Jeff, for addressing those. We've got uh, public works and police department issues that are kind of being convoluted into the big picture uh, as far as the semis, you know, maybe uh, removing the warehouse might alleviate that. But that, like as was stated, is uh, probably more of a police department issue if they're speeding through there uh, as far as uh, just like the stolen mail and diapers on the lawn. I mean, definitely unacceptable, but I think that you know, those are other uh, have other potential solutions as well as the alcohol people mentioned I feel that the vacant lot might be more inviting to alcohol use and mischief than than a medical office um, now as far as uh, I'm going to agree with Ms. Fias as far as uh, the use of, of a building for medical um, very familiar with medical uses of buildings I think it brings a better crowd than than maybe uh, the residents might uh, might expect. Um, so I'm going to opt to ask the residents to give it a chance, and I believe it will ultimately improve the city and the property values and just the general use. And as far as um, you know, I think the parking issue good. Resolution has been suggested. Um, so that's it. Thank you. Commissioner Manfi. I, uh, I don't want to repeat what we've all said here tonight. We do care about our community. But I'm, I'm very pleased to see more medical facilities in West Covina. Uh, I don't think you ever have enough of, of that kind of a special uh, organization that helps us stay healthy. Uh, I'm also pleased when I went through the architectural plans uh, and visited the site to see what a parking lot can turn into in terms of the landscaping and the, and the, the positive sides of that, as well as the landscaping around the building. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pleased with this project. I'm concerned a little bit about parking, and I think we'll have to watch that very carefully. But uh, in terms of the setbacks, uh, that that is not a great concern if it's properly landscaped and it looks to me from all these plans we've been uh, involved with that the landscaping is very appropriate for that uh, the developers got a big job of public relations and working with that neighborhood and it needs to come as well from them and I hope they will realize that thank you no not at this time uh, I agree with my fellow commissioners. Uh, uh, all the things that I heard here today are unacceptable. I mean, they're unacceptable for the diapers, the parking, all that. But that's going on today without the, the medical facility being there. So that's a problem that exists today, not because the medical facility is going in there. And I know for a fact that years ago, Speed Automotive, I think that was the name of the company, was there. And we used to get complaints about cars racing up and down the street and that type of thing. Well, they went out of business, and now you have a company in there that does something with lighting and all that, and I think they have quite a few salespeople out and all that, so I'm sure that's why some of the parking is there. 
So one of the things they're doing to alleviate the parking on the street is providing this parking lot that just sits there dormant and looks really looks like heck. And like I say, they had a fire there not too long ago because of the weeds that are in there. But some of the other issues about semi-trucks and all that, that's not going to change because that semi-truck is going to the paint store. And you've got a, a mattress store, a, pat, uh, a, a paint store there, automotive store. They're, they're still going to be there. And they're still going to have their business. Now, if they're doing things that are illegal, you know, that we can take measures to alleviate that. They shouldn't have semis going down that street. So that's something we can get in touch with the police department to monitor that a little bit. But all the, like I say, all the things that I've heard are existing today. And my, my thought process is in, in most medical facilities that I've seen around the city, um, it, it, it's a different caliber of people. I mean, these are not going to be Section 8 people that are going to be referred from the county and, and lounging around. These are going to be regular patients like you and I that go in for uh, medical services. And I, and I just, the hours are not going to be open late at night. The urgency is going to close at, at 5 or something like that. And, and I have to say, if somebody was having a heart attack, uh, I would hope that any medical facility would help them in an emergency situation. I know if it was myself or one of mine, I'd hope that they'd help, but they're not going to have anybody there to help them, so the ambulances are not going to go there if it's late at night. There won't be anybody there to take care of them. So a lot of the things that you've said I'm concerned about, but I don't think this medical facility is going to compound that. I think, if anything, it's going to alleviate most of those problems. Uh, the, the building is there. It's not going to go away. And right now, it's, it's you know, commercially zoned for, like I say, lighting and manufacturing and all that type of thing. That's going to cease and desist. I mean, where have you ever seen a medical facility where there's a lot of loud noises going around? It's usually very quiet. And they're going to do landscaping, and they're going to have parking. And I think they deserve a chance to go in there. If, if they don't you know, go according to the guidelines that we approve and all that, you have every right to come back to us and let us know what they're doing so we can make them stay within the boundaries that they, that they have been committed to. So I'm in favor of the project. I think we ought to give it a chance. I think the neighbors ought to get together to see if we can do something about on-street parking. Uh, I know right now on Tuesdays on one side of the street, I guess, is there's no parking for street sweeping, so nobody can park there anyway. So I'm in favor of the project, and I'll close the hearing at this point in time. Can we have a uh, reading of the resolution numbers? Yes, there's two. Do we need several for the variances? Or? There, there's two resolutions, so it's just two numbers. It'll be uh, 13 5, 5, 10, and 13 5, 5, 11. Do we have to vote on those separately? Correct. Okay. But you, have to, you need to make a motion that includes both. Okay. I'd like to make a motion. Uh, for resolution number 13-5510 and 13-5511. Uh, do I have a motion? Second. Second. Motion. You made the motion. Didn't you? I made the motion. Okay, second from Commissioner Menifee. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries 4-0. Uh, this is final unless appealed to the uh, City Council within 10 days of this date. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good luck. Thank you. Ma'am, you have the right to appeal the City Council within 10 days. There's no non-hearing items? There's no non-hearing items tonight, no. Okay. Uh, this takes us to continuation of oral communications. Anybody else want to speak? None? Okay. Commission reports, comments, and miscellaneous items. This is a time when any member of the Commission may bring any matter to the attention of the full Commission that is within the scope of duties assigned to the Commission. Any item that was considered during the agenda is not appropriate for discussion in this section of the agenda. No Commission discussion or action can be considered at this time. 
If the Commission desires to discuss an issue raised by the Speaker or take an action, the Commission may vote to agendize the matter for a future meeting. Any comments? None. None. Planning Director's Report. On the Planning Director's Report tonight, we do have the subcommittee minutes for the March 26th and April 9th meetings. We provide those to you after the fact so that those of you who are on the subcommittee know what's, what's going on there. Uh, I have just handed out a, a flyer from a, a company called Warmington Residential that is um, considering developing the St. Martha's Episcopal Church site on Lark Ellen. I don't know that it says that on here, but uh, that's what it is. That and the Dove what is, Daycare. What is, what is it? Uh, Lutheran? What is it? No, St. Mar 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 Martha's, Martha's Episcopal. Okay. Thank you. Um, this is a community meeting that they are scheduling. It's not a city community meeting. It's a community meeting that the Warmington Residential is scheduled. You're invited to attend. You, ha you don't have to attend, but if you want to, you can. If they decide to go forward, it will come before the Planning Commission at some time, probably over the next year. 45 so, single vacancy. I, we haven't seen the plan as of yet. Okay. So, Thank you. Anything else? That's city Council that. action? Nothing to report Anything on City right? Council action. Okay, this brings us to adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Commissioner Benefee. Second. Second. Second by, I want to get Betty to check. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned.